Hi folks, I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine. Back at the turn of the 20th century, the Stickleys didn't finish their arts and crafts furniture with liquid stains. Instead, they colored the wood by chemical means using ammonia fumes. The process is called fuming, and it's the most historically accurate way to finish an arts and crafts piece. Before I built this plant stand, I had never tried fuming before, but I've always wanted to. After all, what better way to finally know what a fumed finish looks like than to experiment and see it firsthand. And I'm really pleased with the results. The wood has this rich, even chocolate brown color, and I never opened a can of stain to achieve it. There are some real benefits to fuming, plus some precautions you need to take. In this video, I want to share what I've learned about fuming in case you decide to give it a go on your next arts and crafts piece. Now, I'm no chemist, but fuming is actually pretty easy to understand. Whenever strong ammonia fumes come into contact with raw oak or any wood that has a high tannin content, the fumes turn the tannins permanently dark. Here's a graphic example of what I mean. Here's a piece of raw white oak from my plant stand project. And here's a piece from the same board that I fumed for 48 hours. Just look at the color difference from tan to this gray-green brown color. And fuming is really thorough. Wherever the fumes come into contact with the wood, the color change happens. On the face grain, the edge grain, and the end grain, pretty evenly. And that's a real benefit to fuming, because unlike a liquid stain, where you might have to force the color into the nooks and crannies, fuming makes that a non-issue. The coloring will be even wherever the raw wood surfaces are exposed. It also penetrates a lot more deeply than a liquid stain will. Just check this out. Here's another sample from my project wood that I fumed, and I've cut it about a quarter inch in from the end grain. Even at a quarter inch, the wood is still fully fumed. And look how deeply it colors the face grain and the edge grain. It's nearly an eighth of an inch deep. If you have some final sanding to do after your project has been fumed, you're not going to sand through that color very easily. On the other hand, think how easy it is to sand right through a wipe-on stain because it barely penetrates the surface. There is something I learned the hard way on this project. Fuming colors sapwood and heartwood differently. Look how much lighter the sapwood is from the heartwood. It's also important to use the same board for similar parts. On this project, I use the same board for the aprons and rails and a different board for the legs, but the same board for all four legs. That gave me consistency where it mattered most with similar types of parts. You don't need many supplies for fuming, but they're all specialized. And the most important of them, of course, is the ammonia. And it can't be the household grade stuff. That only has about a 5% concentration. What you need is much more concentrated ammonia, or the fuming process won't happen with any kind of reasonable speed. This is laboratory grade aqueous ammonia at a 28% concentration. You can buy it from chemical supply houses, and it's powerful stuff. At this concentration, both the fumes and the liquid are extremely caustic, so you have to protect yourself. You'll need chemical-resistant gloves and long sleeves to protect yourself from spills from the liquid. You need to wear a respirator with cartridges that are approved for ammonia gas specifically, or ammonia gas among other gases. And of course, you need to protect your eyes from both the fumes and the liquid. I wore a pair of swim goggles. You also need a way to trap the fumes around the project. I made this tent from four mil sheet plastic and some furring strips, but you could use any plastic or metal container that forms a reasonably airtight chamber. You could use a trash can, a barrel, or even a plastic storage tub. In order to help me get a handle on how quickly the fuming process was going to work, I ran a little fuming test on these eight samples of my plant stand lumber. 
I put them all into the tent at the same time, I change the ammonia every eight hours, and I stop the fuming reaction at specific time intervals by taking a piece out of the tent. And I did that at 2, 4, 8, 12, 16, 24, 36, and 48 hours. And clearly, the longer the pieces were fumed, the darker the color got. But I learned that after 24 hours, the darkening process really slowed down. And 24 hours got the wood reasonably dark. So I decided that 24 hours would be my target time for this plant stand to fume. Now that I knew how the reaction was going to go, it was time to get down to actually fuming the project. Here was what the raw plant stand looked like before it went into the tent. So with my safety gear on and working with a fan nearby to provide good cross ventilation, I filled a glass pie plate with 12 ounces of ammonia and set the tent down into place. I didn't know how long the ammonia would retain full potency, but I wanted the fuming process to go along at a good clip. So I replaced the ammonia in the pie plate at eight hour intervals with fresh ammonia. This may have been overkill, but the ammonia was only about $17 a gallon and I had plenty of extra. Then after 24 hours, I stopped the reaction by lifting off the tent and ventilating my shop for a day to clear out the ammonia gas. Here's how the project looked up close immediately after fuming. The degree to which the plant stand darkened over 24 hours was pretty consistent with my 24 hour test piece. So the initial test was worth doing and the color change was significant. And once you're done fuming your piece, give it a couple of days to off gas so you can get rid of that strong ammonia smell and then you're free to finish it however you like. Just because you fumed the piece doesn't limit your options and once you take the liquid ammonia out of the equation, you're back to working with essentially bare wood again. Now based on the specific oak that you use for the project and even the temperature in your shop, both of those factors can influence the final fumed color that you get and that can range anywhere from sort of a gray greenish brown to a warmer red brown. Now if you don't like that color, you can change it however you like. And in my case here, I've got sort of a grayish green brown going on. So what I want to do is warm that up with some of the warmer colors in the color palette, yellow or orange or red. And I can do that any number of different ways. I could use a water or alcohol based dye. I've got an amber dye here. I could go with a tinted amber or garnet shellac and that would work too. Or I could use an oil based varnish which has an amber tone to it already and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to wipe on a couple coats of Watco Danish oil in the natural color which has an amber tone to it and then I'm going to finish my project in satin spray lacquer to build up that final top coat durability. And there's that nice rich mission brown that I'm after warmed up nicely with this Watco oil varnish blend. Another nice thing about this wiping varnish is that the oil that it contains is going to soak down more deeply into the wood fibers and help light up the medullary flake pattern of this quarter sawn white oak which is the whole reason why we use white oak for mission style furniture in the first place. The oil is going to really help those shine in the light. So I'm going to flood on a couple coats of this wiping varnish, give it about 20 minutes to soak in, and I'm going to wipe off all the excess let it dry overnight or depending on how dry it is in your shop might take a couple of nights. And then I'll go ahead and spray my satin lacquer and that'll do it. I'm really happy with how this traditional stickly finish turned out. Will I fume future arts and crafts projects? Definitely. Especially the ones that are easy to tent. Sure, fuming does take some precautions but it's not unsafe if you protect yourself and the results are pretty striking. So give it a try.
and thanks for watching.